Hey guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio, and today let's talk about something totally different, medical illustration. This has been a huge part of my professional art career, but it's something I haven't really talked about at all on YouTube. It's not something I teach much. It's, it's really just sort of been this separate thing, but I've been getting a lot of questions about it, and it is something very cool that most artists aren't super aware of. So I thought we'd kind of break this down into three things, kind of what is medical illustration, frequently asked questions, what to do if you decide you want to do this, if this feels like the thing for you, what are your next steps? And finally, why did I quit? I think that's always a, a good question if you're starting some big journey towards a certain thing, uh, always good to know why someone would leave it. So as I discuss this, I've, I've got a cool brain illustration going. Full disclosure, I've definitely got a few textbooks open while I do this because I am rusty. There was a time when I may have been able to do this without reference, but that time has passed. I am I graduated in 2007 and I haven't done many just freehand brain illustrations since. So, I just wanted to come completely clean about that that I don't remember how to perfectly accurately draw a human brain from memory, or at least I sure don't anymore. What is medical illustration? It's basically a specialty. It's an artist who has a unique set of skills who can perform this very specialized function of communicating medical, anatomical, scientific concepts. It's essentially illustration like it is in any other form, but with this very specific subject matter, the human body, medicine, medical injuries or surgeries, Medical illustrators get called upon when there is a need to explain some complex scientific concept in a way that will be easy to understand, digestible, something that is beautiful and clear and turns a very complex visual story into something that is learnable. So we're sort of a, a helpful way to let doctors train. All of these textbooks have loads and loads of medical illustration, one of the primary uses for a medical illustrator over the years. A medical illustrator might help develop medical products. So imagine every cool little 3D animation you've ever seen on a pharmaceutical commercial that shows some little particle flowing through the bloodstream. A medical illustrator probably was involved in that if, if it had to be very scientifically accurate. Other things like medical devices, if there is some new and improved surgical tool or technique, a medical illustrator could be hired by a doctor or a hospital to create an animation or a series of illustrations like the one I'm making now to show the advantages of this new tool or technique. So in a world where innovations are happening, happening constantly, like medical science, it's cool to be involved in that. It's kind of this awesome backstage pass into this really exciting world. I really loved that when I first got started. It's actually what made me think that this was the exact right career for me. When I first learned of this as a junior in college, my third year of college, it just seemed like something clicked. Finally, I have found the thing for me. It was very technical. And actually, after two years of being a graphic design major and sitting through dozens of critiques where we would just sit around and discuss something that looked like a blob of paint and just spend an hour and a half coming up with reasons why it had some artistic value. And guys, I got to be honest, I just wanted to jump out of my skin the whole time. I wanted just to stand up and say, I'm, I am sorry, no disrespect to the artist, but this is crap. This doesn't look like anything. 
And all of the explaining in the world will not make up for the total lack of skill on display. Now, I never said that out loud. I hesitate to even mention it on YouTube, but that's where I was by that third year of college. And medical illustration came along as this answer, this highly technical thing. It was either right or it wasn't. It was accurate or it was not. There was not going to be a three-hour critique about what subtext might be involved, what implication or you know, artistic traits might explain away a total lack of craftsmanship. Not going to happen with medical illustration. So the technical nature, the sheer skill and knowledge that it took to be a medical illustrator. I think I like the idea of this very specialized discipline. A medical illustrator has to know a lot. In fact, that's probably the main reason that I have never really taught a course online about this particular subject is because, unfortunately, step one in becoming a medical illustrator is gain an encyclopedic knowledge of human anatomy, which is not really something you can do effectively with online learning. At least you couldn't when I was learning this. To become a medical illustrator, or at least to get the certification that you need upon graduating to be a certified medical illustrator, you have to go to medical school, essentially. And there are only three programs in the U.S. and probably, you know, a handful more around the world that offer this very specialized education. And I absolutely loved the program that I went to. And here's where we'll get into a little bit of, if this seems like something you want to do, here's what what you should do next. I went to the Medical College of Georgia. It's since been renamed Augusta University. It's in Augusta, Georgia. And it's a very cool medical school. Now guys, I got C's in undergrad, uh, especially before... I became a graphic design major and started getting some good art grades. My grades were not good. I was not going to get into medical school based on grades or taking the MCAT, the standardized test for uh, admission to medical school. So it was kind of this really cool backstage pass into medical school. I was in lectures and labs with medical students, people who are doctors now. I found that incredibly cool that an artist, just someone like me, someone far beneath the intellectual horsepower of these future surgeons, that I got to be beside them in all these classes. I took gross anatomy, that dissection of a human cadaver, which was thoroughly surreal and insane and every bit as icky and terrifying and fascinating and amazing as you're probably imagining. It's something that if you have a high ick factor, if if things like that make you cringe, this may not be a career for you. I've always been kind of fascinated by that stuff. Now, it was definitely creepy. I have cadaver lab nightmares to this very day, but it's also just truly amazing and worthwhile and cool. The other thing that I think drew me to this was I was following in the footsteps of old masters, right? You, you always hear about Leonardo da Vinci, for example, had to like secretly dissect cadavers just so that he could learn anatomy to paint more accurately. Um, It's kind of gaining the ultimate knowledge of every muscle, tendon, bone. Every little lump on your body has a name, has a reason. And actually going to medical school level classes to learn about all of that anatomy really felt like the ultimate. If I want to gain true artistic mastery over painting people, this seemed like the absolute gold standard. Now, 
I have more to say on that later because I have since sort of changed my view on that. But that's what initially brought me to that. It was very difficult to get into these programs. When I was applying at the Augusta University, I keep wanting to call it Medical College of Georgia, which is what it was when I went, they only took nine students out of a lot of applicants. I could draw pretty well. I was sort of getting started with digital art at that point. So my Photoshop skills were just in their infancy, but I apparently could, could do charcoal figure drawings well enough that I got one of these nine spots. One of the, the greatest days of my artistic career was when I went for the interview and they told me I had a spot. Incredible. I, I didn't think I had a chance. And it became really the career launching experience of my, my life, which was really cool. Um, so it's a, it's a difficult program to get into. It's very competitive, or it was in 2005 when I applied. Um, low, small, small class sizes, very demanding portfolio requirements. They wanted you to submit a lot of drawings showing you could render well, showing that you could tell a good story. And one thing that I found really interesting, and I think they're still doing it in Georgia, is they ask you to submit drawings of the human hand, which is really cool because hands have so much expressiveness and complexity, second only to the face. I think they're the most really expressive part of the body. And it's one of those things that if you get something kind of wrong, it's immediately visible. I still struggle with hands. I struggled back then in my application. It's still a challenge just because there's just a lot going on. Five fingers that have to all be kind of oriented in the right way. All kinds of wrinkles, tendons, little fat pads that wrinkle together in all these very specific ways. And if one thing's out of place, it's really visible. And the teachers in these medical illustration programs knew exactly that. So that's why that was the, the bar, the challenge for how to get in. On top of that, obviously you had to submit some grades. I think it was miraculous that, that my lack of excellence in college uh, grade-wise still uh, was, I guess, overlooked enough for me to get in. But it was amazing. I, I use things every day in my work to this day that I learned in that program. My teachers were some of the most skillful artists I've ever worked with. Even today, after a 14-year career, they still are the artists who just, out of everybody I've ever met, they have the most just horsepower, just artistic skill of anybody I've ever worked with. Um, and a lot of them are still there at, at this same university, which is the coolest. So I really recommend it. If you're an artist who has a little bit of science nerd sprinkled in with your art nerd, if you like technical things, it's either accurate or it's not. If you like really explaining complex subjects in a simple and beautiful way. Medical illustration might be a, a really good bet for you. And just so you don't disqualify yourself, you don't have to be a straight A student. You don't have to be somebody who is in honors biology all through high school. You know, somebody destined to become a doctor. You don't have to be that smart, smart, book smart in order to be a really great medical illustrator. It's just something that has to be the right fit. Now finally, why did I leave? I did this for 14 years from 2007 until last summer. It has been over one year and I have not done a single professional medical illustration, so I'm starting to consider this truly behind me. And the main thing is that it just got too technical. There's plenty of opportunity for creativity in the medical illustration world, but as somebody who always in their heart of hearts wanted to be a concept artist, this just didn't quite 
do enough for me in terms of creativity and imagination and just wanting to draw cool characters and rocket ships and alien worlds all of that cool stuff that magic that concept artists get to do every day medical illustration just didn't quite cover that for me the other thing is it became a really high pressure world that i worked in i worked for a very cool company that made exhibits medical exhibits for litigation so for personal injury law firms to use these exhibits showing when somebody would get injured in a car wreck what medically happened there or if somebody had surgery what what did that look like what was involved helping a jury understand this complex medicine and as fascinating as that all was it got to be very stressful anytime you're working adjacent to that whole legal world there is just a lot of pressure it's it, i remember thinking to myself a few times i think i've found the only way to turn an art career into something that's not fun and i think when i came to that realization i started looking for the exit and it was a very slow process until i was finally able to do that i was just kind of burned out in that that legal world all of the deadline pressure very demanding clients it just kind of became something that that ended up souring for me over the years and i'm very happy to say that I haven't looked back. Concept art and teaching concept art has been the dream for me. I I feel like I've finally got it right and I'm where I belong. But it's still a really cool profession. It's something I still use in concept art. All of this anatomy that I had to study definitely comes in handy when painting people and characters. In a art discipline that surprisingly few are aware of. So I hope this is some information that you might find useful and if there's one or two of you out there who actually have that light bulb moment who decide this is the thing you've been looking for that would be awesome if I could do that for someone else like it was for me. So if you have any questions please let me know. I can direct you to the school website. I can answer any other questions you have. Just leave them in the comments. We will get back to concept art and the fun stuff next week. But in the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.